Hi everyone, it's me. Uh, this is Andrew Kolb, and this is my my voice. Uh, so that's it. That's introductions. Now that uh, obviously the drawing is well underway, uh, I should might as well, or I might as well get started. Um, one thing I want to do is quickly mention that this is sped up. Uh, so the original kind of runtime on this illustration was about an hour, maybe a little bit over, uh, and that has obviously been sped up uh, because I don't expect you to sit down for that much time watching me slowly draw and as you'll see uh, repeat things multiple times just like this eyebrow uh, look at that timing uh, I feel better about this recording already uh, what you don't know is that this is my sixth attempt let's do this uh, so one thing that I want to quickly talk about is that I'm using Photoshop um, because uh, I have a Cintiq that mimics uh, my uh, pen pressure and kind of uh, overall kind of arm gestures in a way that I just can't achieve through Illustrator. So that is why I use uh, this software, as well as being able to use a lot of kind of great brushes and textures that you just can't achieve in vector work. Uh, case in point, the line work that is kind of happening right now is using uh, Kyle T. Webster's runny inker brushes. Um, and I've also loaded, if you kind of look at the screen on the left hand side, I've also loaded his dry media brushes uh, because that'll be what I use to color the piece once we get a bit farther along. And with those two uh, loaded, uh, I'm obviously now working on a separate layer from my background and my kind of color study. Uh, to kind of create the line work all on, uh, again, one layer. The reason why I have this uh, color study running underneath or just slightly visible with a low transparency or low opacity is due to the fact that I kind of use it as a reference. It's just kind of my kind of work style um, that I tend to use and prefer. So I start off with a pencil sketch, which I then scanned into the computer. Um, and then using that, I start to explore color and line work and just to get a better impression of what the final piece uh, will look like. So that's what you can kind of see running underneath this is my fairly detailed color study. Um, often or more often than not it'll tend to look more realistic uh, or not more realistic but more uh, closer to the final artwork um, simply because again I I don't know, I'd, I'd just prefer to draw something two or three times and make sure that it's exactly right or exactly how I want it than just to kind of wing it and then waste time later on going back and making changes to final artwork um, with uh, with unnecessary revisions or things that could have been caught at the rough stage. So anyway, what this piece is, is um, a kind of riff on the uh, impossible elephant optical illusion. Um, so we've already kind of moved past this, but Ambrosius's legs uh, can't possibly exist. There are five feet, but only four legs, and we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, I'm also recognizing that the sped up pace of this uh, recording is also making me talk a bit quicker. Hopefully I don't say anything that will get lost. Uh, and if it is, then feel free to kind of write in the comments or tweet at me or do something so that way I can clarify. Anyway, what I'm doing now is coloring on a separate layer. Um, so I'm partially painting just with the paintbrush or with the brush tool, but what I'm also doing is using the magic wand uh, coupled with a couple of actions that I've made. So uh, sometimes I'm just painting it by hand, but other times like with the uh, tail, uh, what I was doing was making a selection and then using an action which basically says, once I have the selection, expand by a couple pixels, fill with my foreground color and then deselect. The reason why I do that is because, uh, oh, why do I do it? <laughs> I've gone blank. Oh, uh, the reason why I do that is because sometimes my brushes have a bit of texture to it. So just using the paint bucket tool often leaves a bit of a halo around the edge, uh, which then means I have to go back in and paint in manually on my own again anyway. So it just saves me a bit of time to have those actions running. What's happening now is uh, that the, or now that the uh, kind of base color is finished is I'm adding texture. So what's happening along with kind of using that dry media pack that I mentioned earlier uh, is I'm locking the transparent pixels so that way I can only paint the texture where the color already exists, um, which you can't really see that well right now since it's on the white dog against a white background. Um, but in some of the other elements, What's happening is uh, if you uh, know Photoshop at all, I uh, take the layer and then lock the or click on that uh, little three by three grid, which locks the pixels. So that way I can only paint where um, artwork already exists. 
um, and obviously I forgot to do that which is why I could uh, paint over the tail but the speed of this video means that we've just breezed right past it. Uh, so to go back to kind of what I was talking about, the reason why I do that is so that way uh, I don't have to go back in and unnecessarily erase later on. Um, I also use uh, selections as you can see, but most of the time what I'm doing is uh, painting within uh, the segment using that feature, using the ability to lock the pixels or lock the layer. Uh, so what's happening now is I'm just kind of adding a few more details and um, filling those in separately. Um, I'm using line work in this illustration because of the uh, necessity for it, uh, since the optical illusion kind of requires that there be line work. Um, just using kind of straight fills or simple fills uh, would kind of lose the effect. So uh, kind of concept dictating the style, at least in this case, or at least partially. Um, so now I'm going through finishing the kind of, uh, I guess, Afghan? I don't know what it would necessarily be called, but that's what I'm finishing off. Uh, and actually, one other thing that I wanted to mention as far as kind of the way that I kind of create my artwork that I've often uh, kind of been asked in the past, and now that I'm working with a lot of straight edges right now, um, the way I achieve those straight edges with my brushes is by holding shift and just kind of clicking from point to point, almost like you would with the uh, pen tool in Illustrator. Um, so with the, uh, with the bones or with the grid that I'm making now, I'm either holding shift and then clicking and dragging to get a perfectly vertical or horizontal line, or when I'm working with angled lines or let's say um, a different straight edge, what I will do is just click, hold shift, and then click at the second point and Photoshop automatically connects the dots with your brush. Uh, so now I'm just kind of uh, putting the finishing details on the ground. Uh, and adding some texture above and below the kind of main line work before I go on to color the, the final kind of piece, um, or sorry, color the, the line work on the, the finished piece. My site, what I probably should have done was actually just draw the line work as I went along um, in the color that I wanted it to be, because I actually don't want these black lines right now. What I eventually want to have is a darker version or a darker hold line than what the kind of fill is, uh, which you'll kind of see in a moment. Um, and admittedly, it took a lot longer than I kind of not only expected, but maybe should have planned for. Um, but I mean, hindsight is twenty twenty. So what I did was switch all these lines to pink, so that way I could see if I missed anything. Uh, and then what I'm doing again is just locking the transparent pixels, so that way I can only paint the color back where those lines already exist. Um, and sometimes it means that I'm painting one color into kind of the area of what I want another color to be uh, as far as the lines are concerned, but it doesn't mean that I actually end up getting into the fill area. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm exactly explaining this properly, but um, again, if you have any questions uh, or if uh, I'm thoroughly incoherent, then uh, not only will I question whether or not I do this sort of commentary again, but I will also happily answer your, uh, your queries. So I'm just going through and finishing off the line work. Um, Ambrosius was a bit quicker because they only use one uh, or two, or I only used one or two colors for those hold lines. Uh, admittedly, the kind of different colors on this portion uh, meant a lot of kind of going back and forth. But it was kind of a nice kind of bit of practice uh, and a, a style that I don't often do. Um, so that was a bit of a, of a change of pace, which was uh, kind of always appreciated. Uh, the other thing to kind of consider as I was going through this was uh, areas like where um, the body meets the seat, uh, deciding which color to use. But uh, what I assume was if something is in the foreground, it's going to be the color that we see. So in the case of the saddle, uh, the green lines are above the kind of other objects. So that's why I colored them that way. Um, so now we're just kind of going through finishing off the lines on Ambrosius uh, before kind of wrapping up. Um, I should also mention since there's only kind of about 30 seconds left uh, is that at the very end what I do is add a bit of texture uh, which I made using um, the original kind of labyrinth poster uh, with a halftone filter and a bit of grain on it um, just to give the overall image a bit more warmth and depth. Uh, and then I also took uh, some watercolor brush and painted it in some spatter. So that's what you can see at the top, uh, kind of in the middle there by the tail, and then as we get into the bottom. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Hopefully this was coherent, and thanks for listening.